and red lights. Steering clear of those doesn't have to be difficult. <coughs> With First Source Bank's mobile money management tool, hey Shane, you can see all your you financial the anthem? accounts, balances, and transactions right in after one this. place. So you can easily set monthly budgets to help manage expenses and debt. Get the green light to a successful financial future. With First Source's money We may take, tools, take another break here soon, so Bank, be ready. Where better is better. Member FDIC. Welcome back here to Culver, Indiana. Our A&M Home Service Friday night football game of the week between the Culver Cavaliers and the LaVille Lancers. It's a cool Friday evening. A far cry from last Friday night, weather te temperature-wise, that is for sure. But it's a little overcast here uh, in the land of Lake Max and Cucky, and uh, we are, though, going to have a uh, wonderful night of Friday night football. Scott Masters joins us in the booth here tonight. Scott Aru, you ready to go? I think so. <laughs> it's, it's, it's been a little while, but I, I think I'm ready. Well, we had to yank him out of retirement. It feels yeah, like so. football weather. <laughs> it, does feel like, it does feel like football weather, doesn't it? Yes. I'll tell you. You know, I'm excited because this is going to be the 40th meeting between these two teams and uh, a series that started in 1976. So it's going to be a fun football game. And coming up in a little bit, we'll get you ready for tonight's kickoff. Scott and I back to talk a little bit more. The Gutter Guys pregame show continues after this one-minute timeout. Needs. When it comes to pontoon, Godfrey meets the industry in performance and quality, and Portside Marina has it in stock. From Sandpan, Aqua Patio, and Sweetwater Pontoons, if you're looking for a family boat, Culver Portside Marina can help. Located at 514 West Mill Street in Culver. Stop in or call them at 842-5000. Culver Portside Marina. <laughs> Bring it back after this. So we have an excellent source of demonstrator vehicles offered to you with substantial discount. So search our inventory online or stop in for a test drive at Alabama Ford Lincoln in Plymouth. Welcome back here to Culver High School, a site of our Friday night A&M Home Services football game of the week. The 4-1 and one Lancers, who again are minus two weeks of the regular season, that uh, in week one they found out COVID-19 had struck, and so they had to be out of uh, commission for 14 days, and that wiped out two games. But when they came back, they started the season off with a big win on the road against Winnemac, 17-6, to and then they played their first home game against Caston, in which they won 41-6. to But then they went to Knox and pulled off uh, probably a, a stunner to an awful lot of folks where they beat the Redskins 42-20 to in a game that the Lancers could really do no wrong in in the way they played. And then they had to come back and host John Glenn, who's been having a fantastic season, and beat them 17-14 to in a come-from-behind fashion. But, uh, well, let's just say week uh, seven was – one of interest for this Lancer team. They ended up losing that heartbreaker in the final uh, uh, 47 seconds of the game to North Judson. A field goal ended up being the difference. 9-7 was the final score. It wasn't like the Lancers played completely bad, but as we talked about, you know, sometimes you've got to play, Scott, you know, almost an air-free game in order to beat teams like North Judson, who are going to be very similar to the teams you're going to be facing down the stretch in the postseason. It's like you said, we, we talked about it a little while ago about the error-free game, but when you have a game that's 9-7, that your defense only gave up nine points, but you still weren't able to win the ball game, you, you look at some of the things and you say, well, there was a mistake here, there was a mistake here. you you got to knock the mistakes off if you're going to give yourself a chance to win the ball game and a better chance, I should say, to win the ball game. And you talk about this Lancer defense, 
uh, they've held opponents to a single touchdown three times this season. Yeah. You know, so it's the defense has been played well, and tonight they're going to play well too. They're going to be undersized a little bit, especially up front, but they're going to hit hard, and they're going to have an, a game plan on uh, trying to tackle the size factor that they're going to face here tonight in Culver, uh, in the Culver Cavaliers. This is a, a Laville team that on the offensive side, they have scored two touchdowns or more in a game four times this year. So, again, this team has big play striking ability. Culver's going to have to be wary of that, which means what do you give up in order yeah. to, you know, in order to, you know, keep from getting burnt, which is because if you give the short yard, if you give five, five to ten yards, off one of their receivers, they'll they'll dink and dunk you to death. Well, yeah, and and you know that's you know one reception for five yards that leads you to second and five. Well, that's way more manageable than a second and nine, a second and eight. And if you you're gonna do that, you're gonna give up some things. You you've got to really be careful because you start to give up one thing, and and Laville will smell uh, blood in the water like a shark, and they'll take what you give them. Yeah, and it's Laville's team uh, this year. The, their most rushing yards they've had in a, a game is 215, and that was against Caston. And the most passing yards they've had what came against Knox with 276. So, again, it's 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 fair and balanced, as they like to – everybody likes to use that term with this uh, Lancer team. Um, they they want to do things the right way. They want to control the, the, the clock. They want to try – they just want – they know they got the kids that can make the big play capabilities. So, it's like you're, they're setting them up for the big play. And the Cavaliers just got to be ready for that in some way. This Cavalier team, I mean, they're getting outscored by 143 points uh, this season coming into tonight, about, which is about 18 points per game. So their defense has been a struggle this year, and the numbers just show it. Not one game has had under 200 yards of rushing, though, on the offensive side of things. So that's that give and take thing we just got done talking about with this Cavalier squad. It's been one extreme or the other. And, you know, we talk about trying to get a balance. You heard Coach Zaner on our Saturday morning coaches show throughout the entire uh, you know, high school season talk about hey, i got to figure out a way to work in the passing game on my offense, and i got to figure out a way to be better at defending the pass on the defensive side of things. Yet, you know, sometimes it, one's been working and one's been working better than the other in that particular game. It's just been so inconsistent and different in each game. You know, it, it, it becomes kind of frustrating, and the players kind of get frustrated with that as well. Yeah, and it's, you know, these are young men. that it, It's hard to not get frustrated, and that sometimes that's a coach's biggest job, Tony, is to keep the kids from getting frustrated, uh, keep them from from, uh, you know, being their own worst enemy. And sometimes that happens when frustration steps through. You might make a, a play that you wouldn't necessarily make, maybe a, a penalty and things like that. So, yeah, that's part of the coach's job is to try to keep everything positive. Well, and, you know, part of the success this season that, you know, if you can judge just whether or not this Culver Cavalier team is successful in running the football, they have not lost a time of possession in any game this season. Not once. But I wouldn't imagine you know, so. <laughs> they have not, and they've, they've won it by a couple of minutes yeah. on an average. So that just tells you the running game is a real deal. And their, their coach, is a, he's a psych-up kind of coach. Mike Zayner, he, he believes in his kids. The kids will run through a wall for him. I mean, my goodness, just a second ago, I saw him literally headbutting his, his own he players was. without a helmet. You know, yeah. that's the kind of football mentality he's got. Um, I think it's a little crazy, but you know what? <laughs> I love Mike. Yeah. Uh, this guy is a great coach, and uh, he's an old-fashioned football coach. He loves the run game. He loves the ground and pound, and it shows with his boys. And uh, if you're a lineman, you got to love playing for him, Mike Zaner, because you are never idle. You're well, never no. <laughs> at all. You're, you're going to be moving the whole you're, entire You're playing game. the whole game. So – It'll be interesting to see how they do tonight, though, against this LaVille team as we are about ready to get one, get this game started here. I believe uh, LaVille has won the toss, Tony, and I think they're going to take the ball. LaVille will be decked out in their home white uniforms with blue uh, trimming and lettering. And they have the lettering LV on the side of their helmet. While the Cavaliers, they are decked out in their home gray tops with orange bottoms and white numerals on their jerseys and black helmets with the Cavalier logo, and it'll be Tucker Fisher to kick it off, going right to left on your radio dial, back to receive, will be Paul DeWitt and Andrew Dill, two big specialty team playmakers if you kick it at them. So the Cavaliers need to have a game plan if they are going to be kicking it at those two. So we are ready to get the first quarter on the way here on Max 98.3. That'll do it for the Gutter Guys pregame show. The Gutter Guys, where we make it seamless. 
So Tucker will let it go from the 40-yard line, kicking it right to left on your radio dial. It's a short little kick to the up back, Sarnecki, and he fair catches just inside the 40-yard line. Hey, we also want to say uh, welcome to all our friends at the IHSAATV.org, um, affiliates uh, of uh, Culver TV and RCTV4. And it's great to uh, get a chance to... Uh, Work with those guys, as it always is. So we, uh, again, uh, welcome them, uh, and we appreciate them using our audio for tonight's Indiana High School football game of the week presented by A&M Home Services. All right, the second took off that specialty team's play, and the Lanches will have it first and 10 from their 39-yard line. They'll have Owen Smith play or split out to wide right, and now they do that big shift, and now you're going to look at a – Five-man empty backfield here for the Lancers. Dill will come in motion, and Plummer will hand it to him. Dill is going to try to turn it up that left side. He'll get to the 42-yard line, and that's about it. So a couple of yards on that carry for the Lancers on that motion by Andrew Dill to the left. So now you're looking at a second and eight coming up here for the Lancers as the ball up to the 41-yard line. Lancers will break the huddle. Good to see Coach Shane Lowry. He is here tonight doing the public address announcing. The new head coach of the girls basketball team. Here's a handoff that goes up the middle. And, boy, I tell you, the Cavaliers Ooh. didn't give much on that particular carry. And that was Noah Rackard, I believe, getting the call in that play. Nope, but that was Betcher. Evan Betcher, who came into tonight's Betcher play, averaging right around four, five yards a carry. He only got about a yard. So now you're looking at a third and a long seven coming up here for the Lancers. I don't think that run into the interior defensive line is going to work tonight because that was nice play by the uh, Cavalier D. Well, they had an answer. A two halfback look here on the right side, and it's going to be Plummer to throw deep near side for Owen Smith, and it gets knocked down incomplete at the 35-yard line. Boy, Owen Smith had beaten the two secondary men. Plummer just underthrew it. If he's got a little more oomph, about another five yards in him, that is a breakaway touchdown pass. Instead, it's now a fourth and seven for the Lancers, who will have to punt it away. Yeah, Plummer was hit as he threw, Tony, and I think that may have been what led to that pass being just a little bit short. Blake Thompson is back to receive inside the 25-yard line for the Cavaliers. Zarnecki will boot it from his 35. He got into it. Oh, that's over Thompson's head. It's going to bounce at the 10, rolling to the 5, inside the 5 to the 3. What a tremendous punt by Leighton Zarnecki. We talked about it in the pregame show. Could be a factor after it's all said and done. As Zarnecki with quite a boot there, Tony. We talked about his uh, he's how he's a weapon as a field goal kicker, but there is a punter. Wow, he just pins him at about the four-yard line here to start uh, the Cavalier drive. All right, the Cavaliers will be going right to left on your radio dial to begin this run on this first possession of the game for them. Again, they're going to work out a T formation with their backs of Ethan Thomas, Blake Thompson, and Shane Schumann. So they spot the football right at the two-yard line officially, and it's a carry ride up the middle. And uh, I believe that might have been Schumann who got the call for that one. He gains a couple of yards right up the gut. Lanchers don't mind the two-yard gain. It's the three-plus yard gains that they are concerned about, especially as this game wears on. Again, backs here in the tee, and it's going to be another give uh, to the halfback. And again, it is very tough to call this kind of offense because it's so <laughs> tough to see who got the carry. Schumann again got the call, and so he gains about a yard on this one. So now it's a third and seven here for the Cavaliers. The ball located at the right hash mark on his third and seven from the Culver five. Backs in the tee again. Lancers almost jump. Tucker's now going to look at things and survey the defense. Plenty of time on the play clock, which is now down to 10. And then Culver jumps the gun, and that's going to back him up near the goal line, or half the distance. So with the clock stopped at 9.31 on the Bellman Oil Company scoreboard, it is going to be a third and nine coming up here for the Cavaliers. Coming into the game will be Emiliano Ortiz, and coming out will be Ethan Thomas. So Ortiz will join that T formation in the backfield here with double tights. 
in this second, this uh, third and long. And it's going to be Tucker to throw the football over the middle, and it's caught! Cooper across the 20, and he dropped at the 27. Andrew Dill on the stop for LaVille. A huge passing play for Tucker Fisher, the QB, as Tuck was able to complete his 16th pass of the year, and that's a first down for the Cavaliers. Great job that time by the offensive line, Tony, as they held the defensive line of the Lancers out and gave the quarterback time to throw the ball. Nice reception. Well, it always helps when you got about a six-foot tight end to shoot, <laughs> shoot at. And here's the first play on the first down run, and this is going to be Schumann getting the call. And Schumann will uh, climb up the right tackles derriere for a couple of yards. It'll be a second and eight coming up. Picked up a couple yards, bring up a second. Why Schumann again. 944 yards on the ground coming into tonight. So the watch is on for him this evening to see how many he's going to be able to get against this Lancer defense so he can hit 1,000. T formation again. Schumann's the middle man. It's going to be Fisher giving this time Thompson over in between the guard and center, and he gets dropped just shy of the 35, right near the 33. There may have been a fumble on the uh, play. There was, Tony. Andrew Dill stuck his nose in to try to retrieve it, but it got recovered by Cooper, who was in the neighborhood for the Cavaliers. So they will put it now at the 33-yard line, where it's a third and four coming up for the Cavaliers. Yeah, good thing Cooper was there with Johnny on the spot as that ball hit the carpet. He was right on top of it to save the ball for the Cavaliers. T formation once again for the Cavaliers. Double tights. And the Lancers are coming in hard, and it's going to be a handoff on a lace. Schumann, the call got up in it and Ooh. spun around across Schumann the 35, the right near the 37. He got high load there. But he was able to still pick up a couple yards, and now you're at a fourth and one, but you're still at the 36-yard line. Let's see what Coach Zander is going to do here. They're going to say fourth and two to be exact. So do you punt this one here, or do you – you've been averaging two yards a carry so far. Looks like the Cavaliers are going to go for this, and if they don't get it, they are giving a lot of field position away. But let's see what the Cavs do. Double type formation, T. Backs, it's a Schumann again, off the right tackle. The Lancers are going to stop it. A yard shy of the first down, and the Lancers will take over on downs. I thought there might have been a pooch punt coming up, Tony, but they didn't go back into that formation, so they handed the ball off, and a uh, nice job by the uh, Lancer uh, defense bending but not breaking. Well, again, you know, Coach Zaner, he's known for that kind of call. He feels that, you know, when you're a couple yards away, you're averaging a couple yards on the carry yeah. so far, you should be able to get that. But the Cavs failed to do so, and so the Lancers take over near the right hash mark. And now they have short field starting at the Cavalier 37-yard line going left to right here. Smith is the one receiver to the right. He's the only one out there. Dill, or I should say he got a back on the hip, and it's going to be a counter to Dill. Runs left side. He's trying to stretch it. Schumann slowing him down. He got to the 35, and that is it. So that is a lot of running for just a couple yards on that particular play. Good pursuit that time by the Cavalier defense, Tony, as they uh, weren't really surprised by that play, and they were able to stop the runner. They did gain a few yards, but a uh, nice job by the D. So a second and eight now coming up here for LaVille, and the ball resting at the Culver 35-yard line. Getting no score in the Belmont Oil Company scoreboard. Clocked down to 623 and counting. So here we go. There's a right halfback and a receiver to the top and a receiver to the bottom. There's a snap. Plumber's going to run, trying to stretch it out to the outside. Escapes once inside the 35, 33, 30. First, close to a first down run. He needed to get to around the 26-yard line, and we'll see where they spot the football. It's near the 25, and that will be good enough for a Lancer first down as a young freshman. I'll tell you what, had a lot of freight trains running after him there, but he was able to get that first down run. He was able to go ahead and shake off a couple of hits, attempts by the defense there, and he was able to find the first down marker and uh, get that Lancer first down. So a whole new set of downs for the visiting Lancers. Owen Smith will break out to the left at the left hash mark as well. He'll line up. It'll be a shotgun formation here. Betcher's on the right hip of Plummer. He gets the call and runs it off the right guard. He gets to the 20-yard uh, line, and there he's going to get stopped right Betcher near the 19. Right so that's going to be about a six-yard run for Evan Betcher. 
And it's going to be a second and three coming up here for LaVille. When you can start chunking yards on rushes like that, Tony, that's that helps your uh, offense quite a bit. Is That's a nice six-yard gain by Betcher. That well, sure is. Austin Zaner, who is that right defensive tackle, he takes up a lot of space in that middle, and then Latcher's kind of running away from him, which I would do the same. <laughs> Chips to the right, a receiver to the left. On the island on that left is Zarnecki. In the backfield, it's going to be Dill, I believe, and it's going to be a pitch to him. He's going to run it left side, looking for a key block, and Dill gets draped down, and a face mask against Thompson is going to get called here of Culver. Thompson did a great job staying with Dill. He was trying to shed the tackle, of Colin Allen, the left tackle, who was the lead blocker on the play. But, uh, again, Thompson not only shook the tackle, he brought down Dill, but with a face mask. Face mask penalty on the Cavaliers. So that penalty will give the Lanchers an automatic first down and put the football all the way to the 10-yard line. So that's a 10-yard spot right there. That's one of our uh, things we talked about in the pregame, Tony, was not having any type of uh, penalties that would uh, hurt the squad, and, and that definitely does hurt the defense for uh, Culver. Yeah, even though they got punched in the mouth by Pioneer last week, they the Cavaliers played flawless with their penalties, didn't have any. The, tonight, big one. There's a hand off to Betcher, tries to gut it up the middle, gets swallowed up by a host of gray and orange jerseys just inside the 10, right near the six-yard line. So now you're looking at a That's second right, down right. and goal. The ball resting at the six-yard line for Lavelle, who's looking to punch yeah, it in. They started this drive second. with short field as the goal. Cavaliers the failed to uh, connect on a fourth and two right near the 40-yard line. So the Lancers trying to take advantage of that decision. It'll be Betcher or make that Owen Smith wide right, Dill wide left. Betcher in the backfield, gets the handoff, runs left side, tries to cut it in, and he's going to get in the end zone. And Evan Betcher scores. So a touchdown for the Lancers, as that is the first touchdown of the year for Evan Betcher, and I think that might have been his 49th carry of the season. Well, Betcher did a nice job there following the offensive line, following the guard into that hole, and the guard moved the – the uh, defender out, and Petcher was able to get in and, and get the score for the Lancers, get him on the board, 6 nothing. The uh, point after attempt now is uh, going to be tried by Zarnecki. So Zarnecki, who again has only missed one this year out of 13 tries. Here is the place, and there's the boot. Oh, and he's going to miss this one. Oh, he got it through. He knuckleballed it over the crossbar. Well, I, thought, I thought that baby was short. But I thought we were having case. a good old-fashioned Tony Ross <laughs> 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 jinx, but it didn't happen that time. Yeah, wow. well, it didn't. Yeah, so there, man. Yeah. Seven nothing. Lancers Haven't heard have that one in a while, have you? Yeah, seven nothing. <laughs> Lancers have the lead with the extra point by Zanecki just knuckling over the crossbar at the 425 mark. Seven nothing in favor of the visitors. We're back with more AM Home Services Friday Night Football on Max 98.3 after this. Life doesn't come with a financial roadmap. It does come with a lot of bumps and red lights. Steering clear of those doesn't have to be difficult. With First Source Bank's mobile money management tools, you can see all your financial accounts, balances, and transactions in one place. So you can easily set monthly budgets to help manage expenses and debt. Get the green light to a successful financial future with First Source's money management tools. First Source Bank, where better is better. Member FDIC. Well, a failed fourth and two at the 40-yard line by the Cavaliers gave LaVille short uh, field possession. They marched 40 yards and score the game's first touchdown. And the kickoff to the Cavaliers, and Blake Thompson will pick it up on a two-hop. Gets to the 10, 15, 20, stays on the outside and dropped at the 20. Getting over there for the Lancers on the uh, tackle. I think that might have been Dustin Gill. Dustin Gill. And so the Lancers the will, will get on defense, and the Cavaliers back on the offense with a whole new set of downs from their 20 yard line. 20 yard line will bring up a first and 10. Well, let's Cavaliers. see. You know, after, after giving up the touchdown the way the, the Cavaliers did, 
you you wonder and you hope that the coaching staff made it clear to everybody that's on that offensive side of the football. Hey, we have got to we got to get more focused and and do our job in short yardage runs. And here's a run up the gut for left side off the guard. Getting the call there was Thompson. So Blake gets a couple of yards. Second and seven coming up here for the Cavaliers. You know, sometimes it's almost hard to see which of the running backs gets the ball for Culver there because there, there's three right there at the handoff and, uh, you know, a good, uh, a good gain of about three yards to start this drive. So here's the next play, and it's going to be another run from that T formation that's across the 25-yard line, and a flag is thrown oh, afterwards. Good. And we'll see who this is going to be against. I didn't see the uh, off the particular play that. I think they're going to get a no gain on that particular run. So now you're looking at a third and six, unless this penalty goes against the Cavaliers. Unless they pick the flag up. The Cavaliers are walking backwards, so I don't know what necessarily that's going to mean here. So this will be a. Person, a foul on Culver and sportsmanlike conduct. So this goes against the Cavs, and this will back them up. Now the question is, how much? So, you know, the officials are wandering around like yeah. they're not quite sure themselves <laughs> what, what it should be. I'm glad I'm not the only one confused here. <laughs> well, this unsportsmanlike is going to Ugh. place the Cavaliers clear back inside the 15-yard line right at the 14. So it's going to be a third and forever here for the Cavaliers. So here it is, a third down and a good uh, 16, 17 yards here. And here's a counter play, and the run is going to get maybe a couple of yards, and that's about it. And that was Ortiz on the carry. Ortiz of the three of Schumann and Thompson is the most most athletic and quickest of the running backs out of that T formation. This time, Coach Zayner in this fourth and 15 will send out the punt unit. And Tucker Fisher will be doing the honors, and he's going to end up standing inside his five-yard line here. Andrew Dill hovering around the 50-yard line to return it for the Lancers when it approaches him. Instead, a timeout is called here. And that's going to be Will Holstrauser calling the timeout. Tony, I think he wanted to get the uh, the punt coverage team on the field. So that is the scenario. We'll keep it here and remind you that tonight's game on Max 98.3 is brought to you in part by our good friends at First Source Bank, the Evan Betcher touchdown, six-yard touchdown run. The only score in this game was brought to you by First Source Bank of Plymouth, Bremen, Culver, Argus, and La Paz, your partners from the first. Also by the Gutter Guys in Plymouth. Call the Gutter Guys. We make it seamless at 780-2311. Also by Ancilla College. If you're thinking about heading back to college, let Ancilla provide you the education needed to get your career going. At Ancilla, we believe in you. All right, so both teams coming off the timeout. The Lancers ready to receive. And Dill is going to move up to the 45-yard line of Culver to receive this punt, which will be inside the five from Tucker Fisher when he gets ready to let it go for the Cavaliers. Specialty teams have uh, really been kind of impressive this year, to be honest with you, for this Lancer squad. They've had one return, but it's just a, oh, a very high snap. Comes Ooh. down, and Fisher still got it away. Dill's going to let it bounce to the 50. It takes a Culver bounce. Clear back to the LaVille 40-35 and dropped at the 34. What a remarkable punt by Tucker Fisher as his long snapper threw a – what do you call that? A floater. Not even a floater. Like that was a shot put, to be honest just, with you. That's, but he was able to uh, to catch that ball, and he had all kinds of pressure coming at him. He was able to catch, uh, catch it and get that punt off. Very nice job and a very strong punt. So Tuck saves his Cavaliers some field position here, and the Lancers will start from inside their 35-yard line. They'll spot the ball right at the 33 on this possession. Owen Smith and Andrew Dill are to the right of their quarterback, Plummer, who's in a single-man shotgun look. He's also got two receivers at the top, one of them being Zarnecki. 
Here is the snap. Plummer drops back, looking over the middle, and it's a tight end. It's a, a dump play to Dill over the middle. 40, 45, takes it to the outside where he's ran out of bounds shy of the 50. So that's going to move the chains for the Lancers with 2.28 left to go in the Belmont Oil Company scoreboard. 7 nothing in favor of the Lancers. Boy, Tony Dill was wide open there, and a nice pass from the quarterback hit him, and he was able to gain a first down for the Lancers. And There's a couple key blocks on that particular yes. play that sets it all up, and, so, and it's very tough to defend, very tough. Owen Smith is the wide receiver to the right. And under the center is Plummer with an offset look and with the backs, and it's a give to Dill. He's trying to stretch it near his side, getting chased after it to the 45, cuts oh. it up 50. There is going to be brought down out of bounds right along the Culver sideline. And about a five-yard run for Andrew Dill. We do have a flag here, Tony, and we'll see if that's going to be a holding call on the offensive line here. Yeah, it's right in front of the Culver sideline near the 50-yard line. While we got a moment, we've got to say a special congratulations to Colton Miller, who is our RCTV4 Culver Television uh, cameraman. He is celebrating his senior year doing camera. And uh, it's nice to know that we are able to provide some audio for his final senior year or senior uh, camera opportunity. Hopefully we'll have many more with him. That penalty goes against the Lancers, by the way, and will drop them back all the way to the 43-yard line. Yeah, I thought that was uh, going to be a hold, Tony. I think the offensive lineman got up underneath the, the pads of uh, the defensive player there for Culver and just held on a little too long. So it'll be a second down and 14 coming up here for the Lancers from the 42-yard line. A receiver top and bottom and Dylan Smith. Offset eye right. Doyle's going to be the halfback, and he's going to get the call. Runs it up the middle. He's Running high, gets across the 45, up to the 47-yard line, getting the Lancers to about an eight-yard third and eight coming up. Good run by Aiden Doyle at the fullback position. He was lined up at the right halfback, but he's a fullback by nature just because of his strength. He was intended to be the starting quarterback this year for the Lancers, but got injured in week one of practice. And then, of course, COVID struck the Lancer program for two weeks, and uh, he – his injury was going to keep him out of the lineup, what they thought for the entire season. But a tremendous job rehabbing with uh, Mr. Hall and his staff. And Aiden Doyle is getting a chance to play into the postseason. Here's Plummer, the quick out to Dill. To the, catches at the 50. Nice get around. He gets to the 45 of Culver and drug down shy of the 40-yard line. Blake Thompson was able to chase him down, but not enough as a first down for the Lancers takes place as the football will be sparted right at the 43. Dill not only has good hands, Tony, he's got real good vision too. He was able to get that pass caught and get away from the defenders and get the first down for Laville. Well, having blinding speed yeah, uh, helps. helps. I wouldn't know anything <laughs> about that. No. No. I got chugging speed. No, I don't even have that. <laughs> yeah. I don't have that anymore. <laughs> Ball to 43 in his first and 10, and it's going to be Plummer to tuck and run. He's going to take it off the right guard, gets inside, to, tucks it to the middle, and gets to the 35-yard line. Boy, that's a big 7-8 yard gain by the freshman. It almost kind of looked like a broken play. I think you might be right, Tony. That might have been a broken play, but a nice job to, uh, to get up the middle and, and get eight positive yards on that play, which I think you were right. I think it was broke. Belmont Oil Company scoreboard has a 7-0 Lancer lead, and we're down to the final 28 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Lancers break the huddle. The ball placed at the 39-yard line of Culver. Lancers on another offensive drive. It's Dill on the left-hand side. Smith to the right. Plumber's going to tuck and run off the right guard again. Found a seam inside the 30, and he's brought down by a couple of Cavaliers right near the 27-yard line. Getting in the mix there was uh, Schumann. As, once again, Shane Schumann, that name is going to be said an awful lot here tonight for the Cobra Cavaliers, just a great player. That will be the final play of the first quarter, and we have completed one quarter of football here from Culver. It is 7-0. The Lancers lead the Cavaliers. It's the 40th meeting between these two programs, and we're going to continue with more of it. Second quarter action when we come back on Max 98.3 Sports. All water recreational needs. When it comes to pontoons, Godfrey leads the industry in performance and quality, and Portside Marina has it in stock. From Sampan, Aqua Patio, and Sweetwater Pontoons, if you're looking for a family boat, Culver Portside Marina can help. Located at 514 West Mill Street in Culver, stop in or call them at 842 5000. Culver Portside Marina. 
Scott Masters, Tony Ross, we're back here at Culver High School. We want to send the shout out to Doug Griffith, who's normally with us. He's uh, well, he caught the pneumonia, doggone it, and now he's on the upside of it. And hopefully, we'll have him with us when we start week one of the sectional play as the Bremen Lions will get ready to take on Rochester. And that'll be our first postseason matchup. If the Lancers win, they'll take on Pioneer in week two as Pioneer will. Uh, get ready for their first game, and that'll be a dandy of a game. And so we'll uh, may be able to follow that one. Not quite sure. We'll see how the dice rolls after week one of the postseason. But sometimes I wonder, does Pioneer ever slow down? I mean, is there ever? Is there how ever? many Llewellyns can you have in a program? Uh, you know, apparently thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's every every year you look. It's like, my God, haven't they graduated yeah. yet? But no, and, and you know what? Poor that's Mrs. A, what, what a program! Oh yeah, my gosh, what a program that Pioneer team is! And uh, kudos to their coaching staff, the community, and the kids. First and ten here for the Lanchers as we switch ends. The Lanchers now will be heading toward the north end zone. Plumbers in a single back gun look with a receiver top and bottom here. Actually, twins to the left if you include Smith on the out left. Betcher comes in motion. And there's the snap. It's Plummer. Look out. There's traffic, and the bubble screen is going to be caught off the shoe tops by Andrew Dill just inside of the 30-yard line as it's only a couple-yard gain. But, uh, boy, Andrew Dill did a great job saving that particular play. No gain, they're going to say, on that particular play. So now it's a second and ten coming up for LaVille. Boy, took it off the shoe tops there to save the uh, incomplete pass. No, no gain on that play, but uh, no, not an incomplete pass and not, not a fumble either. That, too, didn't look like it was exactly run the way they normally would. Single back with Plummer under the center this time, and he's going to hand it off Betcher off the right guard. He's going to take it to the edge. He's got a hole, 30-20, and he's going to be on his way down the right sideline for a LaVille touchdown. Evan Betcher on the carry. Evan Betcher with a great run from 27 yards out. That's his second touchdown scamper of the night. This one, 27 yards, and just like that, it's now a 13 to nothing LaVille lead. Well, Betcher gets a block there, Tony, by his offensive lineman, and he that's all he needed. It was one block, and he was off to the races, and he scored and got six again for the uh, Lancers. And the rain begins to fall here at Culver. Wasn't expecting this. Here is the point after as Arnecki sends it high into the night sky and good through the uprights. So with 11-12 left to go here at uh, Culver on the Bellman Oil Company scoreboard, it's LaVille 14, Culver nothing, back after this 30-second timeout. You don't have anything out for you? When you shop at no. Oliver Corn okay. Lincoln Implements, you're treated like family, and it's a full-service experience. Our expert service team can Blown keep your vehicle way. happy for years. From simple maintenance to major repairs, well, when I got, we even provide a loaner car sign out there to the stay overnight. Got, okay. We have an excellent okay. source of demonstrator vehicles offered to you with substantial discounts. So search our inventory online or stop in for a test drive at Oliver Ford Lincoln in Plymouth. 14 to nothing. The Lancers had the lead on the Bellman Oil Company scoreboard. Scott Masters, Tony Ross, welcoming all those on the Culver uh, affiliate, IHSAATV.org and RCTV4. We appreciate you tuning in to tonight, catching uh, our audio coverage, uh, matching with the video. So we are ready to continue on here. The rain falling and falling rather hard. I just I was I don't think this was in the forecast. Well, At least not for another day or two, I thought. But you know what? It's Indiana weather and it's the fall, so there you go. <laughs> I was gonna say just wait ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Zarnecki will let it go. And it's caught by the Cavaliers and inside the twenty five yard line. Kimberley on the return for the Cavaliers. Kindermay is a 5'10", 150-pound freshman on the return. So they'll put the football right at the 24-yard line for the Cavaliers. So it's first and 10. Almost a minute gone by here in the second quarter. And I think the rain has stopped. Uh, it's a slight drizzle right now. Like, like I said, just wait a few minutes. Yeah. It'll change. <laughs> It'll change. 
All right, here's the give, and it's Schumann getting the carry off the right guard. He's going to take it on full steam ahead wow. to the 30-yard line. What a strong seven-yard run by Shane Schumann. I just love watching kids like that. I mean, they just they just come in, and they say, if you think you can bring me down, good luck. I'm not going down with a fight. He got hit by three defenders, Tony. Finally got brought down <laughs> yes, by the fourth. He, yes. he was carrying three guys with him. Yes, he was. Well, that's a big eight-yard gain, so now it's second and two here for the Cavaliers. Again, it's a this T look, and to get to Schumann again, and he finally gets stuffed by a host of white jerseys. Getting in on that tackle was Tyler Studden. He was in on the tackle. Zarnecki added some pressure. Schumann with another strong run, but he didn't get anywhere with it. So now it's a third and two for the Cavaliers. No gain on the play. So Ortiz will check out, and coming in as a running back substitution will be Ian Brown, a 5'6", 145-pound sophomore. So we'll see if Coach Zayner will throw out another passing opportunity here in this third and two. Or will he try to regain it on the ground? T formation once more. It's going to be a give left side. Thompson met. Two yards into his run, and he is close to the first down, but stopped shy of by one yard. Doyle came in and just squared him up before he can get to that first down marker. So a good hit by Aiden Doyle makes it fourth and one for the Cavaliers. And now it's decision time again for Coach Zaner. Do you bring the punt team out, or do you go for it? And right now, with Tucker Fisher out there, well, we'll see, because Tucker is the one that also does the punting here. Well, it looks like the Cavs are going to go for this here. It's going to be a fourth and one from the Culver 33. Tucker looking at the Lancer defense, and I think it's going to be a scenario where Culver was hoping that they get the Lancers to jump offside, but that was not the case until so Culver will call a timeout at the 9.02 mark here in the Bellman Oil Company scoreboard. It is 14 to nothing in favor of the LaVille Lancers. Scott Masters, Tony Ross. Here at Culver High School, a very chilly night. We just got a little passing shower go through, and now the rain is done, hopefully for the rest of the evening. But like we said, we never know. There is a little bit of a wind that's uh, coming out of the northwest, which is not warming things up by any stretch of the imagination, folks. And that wind's been, the wind has been here for quite a while, as, as if the uh, uh, listeners heard us in our pregame with the coaches. That there was a little <laughs> bit of wind when, when we were meeting with the coaches. Well, so. I, I, I had to record that one. Wednesday or Thursday. I can't remember which one. Oh, my God. The wind was ridiculous. <laughs> and no matter which way you try to. No. Well, yeah. I, I tried to cover. I, I yeah. was, you know. <laughs> Mother Nature was just going to have a say-so in that interview, no matter what I tried to do on that one. So, yeah. that, that was, those are the fun interviews. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you're just tuning in, two touchdowns by Evan Betcher right now, the difference in this ball game. And we're coming off a Culver timeout, and they'll be going for it. Fourth and one from the 33-yard line here in the second quarter. What a big play call here. And here's the give right up the middle. And did the Cavaliers get it? That's the question. Boy, I'm, the officials are not marking this in the Cavaliers' way, but we'll see. Schumann got the carry. That placement Cavalier may have got the Cavalier first down, and it yes. did. So Schumann was able to bust through enough to get the first down run for the Cavaliers. And from the 39-yard line, it'll be a first and 10 for the home team. 8.45 and counting left to go here in the second frame. Cavaliers will pull up to the line. Again, it's going to be a T formation. And it's going to be a give. Thompson getting the call, and he's going to run it down or up to the 40. Or that's Schumann, I'm sorry. So Schumann on the carry. Boy, I tell you, that kid is strong. Gained five yards with, again, two to three, four defenders on his back. Yeah, Tony, he's quite a load when he gets the ball and he gets his forward motion going. It takes more than one defender to get him on the ground. And if you're watching on RCTV 4, you know, if you're watching on Channel 4 and, you know, you can see just how hard his legs are churning. They're nonstop. All right, this time it's a two-man with a right halfback, and it's going to be a counter play to Thompson, and he's going to gain about two yards on that particular play. Third 
I think we're going to have uh, third and maybe one to go here. Maybe a long one. Closer to two, maybe. But the uh, they keep the clock running is uh, Culver likes to run the football. and uh, It's what they do best. It's what, yeah, it's what they do best and let the time go off the clock. They need a yard here to keep the drive alive. Third and one for the Cavaliers. Ball at the 43-yard line of Culver. This time a T formation once again. Here's the snap, and it's going to be Tucker to throw the football. Has to scramble to his left, throws up field. It's a 50-50 ball that Dill comes down with the interception right at the 30-yard line. The free safety, Andrew Dill, stayed with his man that was downfield. Cooper was the man who made the tackle because he was the intended receiver on the play. Well, Dill did a nice job of keeping his body in between the defender and the ball, and he was able to to watch the pass come and just uh, pick it off. And, and, again, another great play by the defense for the Lancers and uh, first and 10. 7.05 left to go here in the second quarter. And now possession goes to the Lancers as we'll flip the field and go right to left. Empty backfield for the freshman quarterback, Lucas Plummer. Trips to the left, the receiver to the right. That's the man in deal. And that's a little dipsy dude to Zarnecki, who throws a long ball wide open. Betcher at the 45. He's got nobody. He is going to go all the way for a Lancer touchdown. A little razzle-dazzle there as Zarnecki received the, uh, the pitch and uh, planted his foot and threw a nice pass, and it was wide open and into the, into the end zone goes Zarnecki. Zarnecki with the touchdown pass, oh. and again, what a well-played and executed possession there by the Lancers with the quick strike. 6.52 left to go here in the second quarter. It's now 20 to nothing in favor of the Lancers, just like that. I think that was a, what, 13-second drive? <laughs> Not even sure it was that much. Right. Zarnecki for the point after as the placement is up, and it is perfect. So the Lancers, there's that big play capability we were talking about with this LaVille offense. Worked to perfection on that play. And now they're up three touchdowns. 21 to nothing. That's your score. 652 left in the first half. Back with more from the our AM Home Services. Game of the week after this timeout. Doesn't like pizza, right? But if you okay, who caught that touchdown pass? pass. Pizza lately. More fresh ingredients and a new pizza 24 sauce. 24 better again? Good it's God. Like a slice of heaven each and every time you take a bite. And now there's 16 wow. new style of pizzas for you to choose from on the menu. And let's not forget the mouth-watering wings or their five different pasta dishes to choose from. Bourbon Street how Pizza long with that? area locations in uh, Plymouth, Culver, Argus, Walkerton, Napanee, yeah. and in Bourbon. Okay. Yeah. If you're looking for a quick and delicious dinner for the entire family to enjoy, look no further than a Bourbon Street Pizza location near you. Welcome back here to... <laughs> <laughs> hey, Shane, Shane, Shane Lowry, I love this guy. You know what? I think, Shane, you're going to be my guest at halftime. I want to introduce my audience to you because, yeah. <laughs> now, I just no. I just got to remind you, I got FCC regulations that I got to follow. So, well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the rundown afterwards before before I put you on the air. Boy, Betcher I, was uh, the strike on that one for the Lancers and 60-plus uh, yard play there. 21 to nothing, LaVille. Here's the boot to the Cavaliers. Catching it on a hop and running to the middle is Thompson. Shucks one, but gets nailed at the 20. So the Cavaliers will have it first and 10 with 6.45 remaining here in the first half. And they need to get on the board. Need to have some kind of answer, some kind of drive that's going to chew off the, the next 6.45 of this first half and take some momentum into halftime. Line. It's what this Cavalier team does, but right now, again, they've kind of hurt themselves with a penalty. They've been – interception has not helped. And so, again, the Cavaliers have been their own worst enemy in this first half. T formation, and it's going to be a give to the right side. Boy, look at the churning again by Schumann. He crosses the 25-yard line up to the 27. That's a five-yard carry. And a beauty. I'm not kidding when I say that it takes more than one defender to bring that kid down. I mean, he gets his legs just to chugging, and uh, he takes one hit, two hit, and the third hit finally got him on the ground. So now it's a second and five from the 27 yard line. 
It'll be a T formation here for the Cavaliers. And it's going to be a give. And I believe this is Schumann again getting the call up off the left guard. On the carry. This is inside the 30-yard line up to the 28th, so, or, or to back to the 29. So now you're looking at a third and a long two coming up here for the Cavaliers. Riker and Plummer on the tackle. Plummer got his, his nose in on that last tackle for the Lancers. Third and three now for Culver from their 29. T formation again. Tucker going to apply an audible here as he checks his defense. They stack it up to the Lancers, and it's a fumble by Schumann, and the Lancers recover at the 33, and another Culver play. turnover. Schumann was trying to make his cut before he had his hand on the ball and it slipped out of his hands, and the LaVille defense was right there to uh, capitalize and pick that ball up, and once again, it'll be first and 10 for the Lancers. So the Cavaliers once again giving up short field because of their own doing, and now they're back on defense. Owen Smith will be the wide receiver right. Plummer in a single gun look with DeWitt on his left hip. Here's the snap up and a fumble by Plummer, recovered by the Cavaliers, and I think that's Thompson who picked it up, and it is. So, so Thompson on the recovery on the Culver turnover. So we're trading fumbles now. <laughs> What's good for the goose is good for the gander, I suppose. Apparently. <laughs> so 5-13 left to go here in the second quarter, and the Cavaliers recover the possession thanks to a LaVille turnover. That could have been disastrous for Culver if they don't recover that fumble because they could have went down seven more points here. But nice job by their defense to uh, create a turnover and back on offense they go. So that fumble happens at the 513 mark and here is the Cavalier run. And that's gonna be Schumann getting the call. Off the right guard he goes. Nope, that's Ortiz, Ortiz I'm sorry. So Ortiz on the carry. He'll maybe get a yard if they give him a generous spot, which they won't, so no gain on that play. Second and 10 coming. Student on the tackle. Fisher comes from the near sideline for the Cavaliers. 4.45 and counting left on the Belmont Oil Company scoreboard. 21-0 Lancers. Second and 10 from the 36-yard line of the Cavaliers. T formation, Schumann's the man in the middle. Thompson on the right. He, Thompson gets the pitch. He's going to run it left wing side. He's going to lower his head, gains maybe a yard before Thompson he is gang carry. tackled by a host of white jerseys. Tackled Boy, by getting in on that particular play is Hayden Wheatbrook, the sophomore free safety who got in on the play. Gain of a couple, third and eight now for the Cavaliers. You know, Wheatbrook has been a nice story has really uh, put in some good minutes at the safety position this year for Coach Hostrauser. Really likes how he reads plays. And he showed it right there on that particular play, making that tackle on the big fella, Thompson. So now you got a third and eight from the 37-yard line. Play clock down to one. Cavs get it off. It's Ortiz getting the pitch, running it to the near side, trying to outrun his man Smith. And Owen's going to take him out of bounds right near the 45-yard line. Smith stays around the neighborhood to help up Ortiz. That's going to be a gain of about four yards on the play, but it's going to be a fourth and a long four coming up for the home team, Culver Cavaliers. Owen Smith there, Tony, with nice closing speed to tackle the uh, – Paul Carrier for Culver, but boy, he got over there in a hurry. Ortiz is sophomore, chased down by another sophomore on that particular play. So it's fourth and three, the ball resting at the 43, Cavaliers going for it. Here's the snap, and it's going to be a counter play up the middle. That'll be a first down run, Schumann, and that will move the chains for the Cavaliers. A big time run by Shane Schumann it's gets five yards. He only needed four, and he got about four and a half. Again. So the clock down to 328 and counting. Again, shedding tackles, would be tacklers <laughs> to get that first down. He is a load when he goes, gets that ball and goes straight. Ball placed right in the middle of the field. And it'll be a whole new set of downs for the Cavs. 
They'll come to the huddle, and from the 47-yard line, they'll stay in that T formation, three backs across with two tight ends. And here's going to be a give. First man through. Schumann broke it. 45, 40, and he's brought down at the 35-yard line for a Cavalier first down. Yeah, definitely. If they do not keep an eye on him, they be in the Lancer defense. He is able and quickly gets through that line and up for a nice first down. Got a 16-yard scamper by Schumann there. First and 10 Cavs, and the first play for them, it's going to be a run up the middle. Boy, trapped underneath that pile of humanity was Colin <laughs> Allen, and he, boy, looked like he's kind of grimacing a little bit. But he's going to be helped up, and he knows, nope, he's limping a little bit. Yeah, he's going to come off. Allen on the Coming tackle. in will be Mason Step for the Lancers. Step's going to probably be placed right on that front line here. So the Cavaliers, again, that, that massive humanity they have on that front line, man. <laughs> and if you're 180 pounds, you've got a tough go at it. Again, out of the straight T formation to give to Schumann off the left side, and uh, the Cavs may get a couple yards on it. Now we're down under two minutes, and now you're looking at a second and third and eight coming up here for the Cavaliers. Boy, as many times as Schumann's ran the ball here in the first half, he's going to need this half time to, to catch his breath just a little bit, Tony. Well, I hope we can get his yardage in the first half so we can kind of keep track because he could very easily hit the 1,000 mark tonight. Yeah. So it's, they're going to mark it back uh, to a third and nine here for the Cavaliers. And it's at the LaVille 33-yard line, ball near the left hash mark. Straight T formation again. It's going to be a pitch. It's Ortiz getting the call. Tries to cut it up the middle, but he goes down as he saw two Ortiz white jerseys on collapsing carry. on him just shy of the 30. And now it's going to be a fourth and a long, long six, maybe seven here for the Cavs. But they're in LaVille real estate, and you would imagine they're going to go for it here. Oh, yeah. I mean, with the time we have on the clock right here right now before half, yeah, you're going for it. So the clock down to a minute on the Bellman Oil Company scoreboard, 21 to nothing. It's the LaVille Lancers holding with the score. Cavaliers trying to get into the end zone in this fourth and seven from the 32. Long look by Tucker Fisher, the quarterback. Lancers going to creep in, and they bring an extra guy on the front line here. So you've got five that are just straying around, and the timeout's going to be called here timeout. right at the one-second mark on the uh, secondary clock. And so with this timeout, 36 seconds left to go in this first half, 21 to nothing. The LaVille Lancers have the lead on the Bellman Oil Company scoreboard. Well, we said, you know, this was going to be one of those games that it's going to be the big play making of LaVille versus the strength and the power of, of Culver. And we mentioned also that the Cavs were going to have to play as close to a clean game as possible they just have not done that, and it's cost them a couple of uh, scores. It's come to fruition, as we said it would, Tony. And, uh, you know, I think one of the big things that, that may get overlooked sometimes with this offense from uh, LaVille is their defense is pretty darn good. I mean, they have done a really, really stout job here of, of holding the run uh, to, for the most part. I mean, you're getting a couple guys getting some yards, but, boy, the defense, I think, for LaVille's played very nicely. Well, I think the, the biggest run given up was just a moment ago by Shane Schumann of 15 yards. Yeah. You know, and, you know, if you can, you can live with that one big run if you're stopping and keeping them at third and long. Right. And, you know, and so, again, it's just – you're right, and we mentioned that the technique tonight for LaVille in their tackling scheme, the no man wins. Create the mesh in the middle because a lot of the runs that the Cavaliers have, and they've shown it, have been in between the tackles. Now, they tried to edge it, but LaVille's just got that linebacker speed and secondary yes. speed that's been able to – to just at least, at least hold them up enough to get help. Right, right. Yeah, they, they've got to try to go up the middle because when they go to the outside, yeah, that's when the speed of the defense from LaVille shows – T formation on this fourth and long eight. And Tucker gets hit from behind, got the throw away, and it's caught, completed at the 25. And the catch is going to be made by Culver's Marquez number 80, Anderson. Marquez Anderson. But Fisher is down. Yeah, he took a shot there, Tony. From behind. Good job, Anderson, tracking that ball down and coming and getting the reception from his tight end position. But, boy, yeah, he took one heck of a shot there. I think he's got his bell rung. So, 
unfortunate for the Cavaliers. They did get the first down, so it is fortunate. So, Coach Will Ostrazer not happy across the way with the placement of the football. And uh, he's letting the officials know about it. <laughs> but the Cavaliers get the first down on the passing play of nine yards. They needed eight, and they got the nine. Fisher is going to stay in the game. He's fine. He'll get underneath the center. Backs are in a T formation with double tights. It's going to be a pitch. Ortiz will try to, or Thomas will try to run to the outside, and the Lanches say no. As a matter of fact, they're going to create a loss of yardage here. Getting in on there for the Lanches, Tyler Studden, once again, making a big play. So now a timeout is going to be called with 22.8 seconds left in this second down and 12 coming. Stoughton is a load, and he's got some good foot speed as well to go with that, Tony. Well, so. I'm glad you brought him up because here's another success story this year. The kid's gotten bigger. He committed during the offseason uh, to the weight program for LaVille, and he's very athletic. You know, sometimes his practice ethics aren't the greatest, but he seems to make the plays when he needs to make the plays. When the coaches get on him in practice to turn up, turn it up a turn little it up bit. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, he responds then. Um, and I, what he's thinking, what I, what, what you're seeing less and less of that happen to take place in practice. Mm -hmm. The good news is that when you get it on game day, it's full. Uh, there's there's no laps. There's no taking off a play. Uh, mm -hmm. Studden is a, a tremendous, tremendous uh, defensive lineman for this LaVille team. And if he continues to keep that right between the ears, this kid's going to be a force to reckon with uh, as the season goes on for the postseason. They're going to need him. I mean, oh, yeah. They're going to need him. Studden, one of the uh, few se seniors on this LaVille team this year, too. And so, again, sometimes you get players who kind of ride, who kind of coast because of their athletic ability a little bit. Yeah. You know, Studden sometimes does that. But uh, when the coaches get on him, he, he changes things real quick. Well, the Cavaliers break out of a uh, three-back formation with uh, two to the left and a fumble off the snap. Fisher tries to get it back, but the Lancers are saying they recovered, and it looks like they did. Another fumble by the Cavaliers. This comes at the 26-yard line of LaVille with 17 seconds left, and there goes the drive. You know, it's just, you know, we, we I, I hope people don't think we're beating a dead horse here, Tony, but the turnovers, the turnovers, the turnovers, they're a big part of the game, and right now it's really hurting the Cavaliers. Well, they were at the LaVille 26. That's what makes that kind of sting the most. Yes. So it will be the Lancers lining up first and 10 from the 26. Trips to the right. Dill comes in motion. He's going to pitch, and it's Zerzecki to throw the ball. Looking deep near sideline for Dill. He's got to step on his man. He dives to catch it. Did he make it? It hits the ground first. He ended up still with the football, but it hit the ground before he was able to grab it. Zerzecki just underthrew it a little bit. I'm impressed with the arm of Zarnecki. I mean, oh, Layton's got a good arm. Yeah, yeah he's oh got a strong arm. Goodness. And he's fast with the ball. He's got a nice arm, so he's a, he's a dual threat, as they say. Well, Jason Cato was picked on as because he's the near side cornerback, the 5'8", 155-pound sophomore, been in and out as a secondary player, but this he's you know he he's learning. I guess that's the best way to put it right now. Yeah, he's learning the position. But he's also going up against guys who are 5'10 to 6 foot. And both of them are lined up on the left side with Betcher and Zarnecki. Trips to the right, empty backfield with uh, just a few seconds left. And it's going to be quick out to Zarnecki. Got a great block. Gets to the 30, to the 40 near sideline. Broke it. Gets to the 50. Gets by another defender. Now to the culver 40. Stretches to the middle. Then takes it outside 30. To the 20. To the 10. He scores! LaVille with a touchdown run! From the from their own 26-yard line, that's about a 70, just about a 70-yard plus, a 70-yard plus passing play. And he just once he caught the ball, Tony, he was just able to see the the open field in front of him, was able to move nicely uh, around some defenders, and then it was a foot race, and he won the foot race to the end zone. 74-yard TD catch. 
So it's now 27 to nothing. The Lancers have the lead. And a timeout is called. There is no time left on the clock. The Lancers just get it in before the scoreboard hits zero, and they'll go for the extra point here. So with this timeout, I'm sure both coaches have different conversations going within the huddle. But, uh, boy, I tell you again, the big playmaking of LaVille has just been outstanding. Yeah, it has, and and they've done a nice job of uh, capitalizing on some of the Cavalier mistakes, Tony, and that's what winning ball teams do. Well, we said the big play capability here for the Lancers has been one of the reasons why they have been successful this season. They came into tonight with a 4-1 record. Zarnecki on for the extra point. Zarnecki's got the extra point coming here. No time left on the clock. Zarnecki will await. Here's the snap. Here's the place. There's the kick. And again, perfect through the upright into the night sky. And we have completed one half of football here at Culver. Lancers have a 28 to nothing lead. And before we take our break, I want to welcome in the uh, LaVille Lancer assistant coach, Isaac Ash. And uh, coach, we, we, we talked about the, the fact that tonight you guys were going to have to deal with the physical play of this uh, Culver team. You guys have done well in sticking with your own here or keeping up with them. Yeah, yeah, we've done a pretty good job. We told these guys coming in, they're huge, and they're always huge, and they're always physical, and that's what it's going to be. It's going to be an ugly game because it's just smash mouth. You know what's coming. you got to stop it, right? You know, uh, one of the things you guys worked on uh, this week in practice was low man wins in the, in the tank. Uh, the ball sectionals are going to be tomorrow. Last night, uh, the Braveman Lady Lions won an exciting five-set uh, matchup against South Central, beating them a 15-11 in the final frame to advance to the semifinal round, they'll face Westville at 1 p.m. in Bremen. Rochester and LaVille will be the matchup, earlier matchup at 11 a.m. At Triton, Argus will take on Triton at 9.30 in the morning, followed by West Central and Culver. And then at 3 a.m. at New Prairie, Mishawaka Marion uh, lost last night, uh, and New Prairie will play the second game. John Glenn will play the first game Saturday morning at 10 a.m. against South Bend, Washington, and at 4 a.m. Plymouth will play game two against Michigan City with a 7 p.m. championship. So. Volleyball action tomorrow. We'll try to squeeze in some uh, soccer talk as well um, and let uh, our schedule we like possibly uh, come Saturday night. But in the meantime, it start, it's time to start uh, the second half here as the Lancers kick it off to the Cavaliers. And it's going to be a return by Thompson who gets to the 25, lowers his head, and gets taken down right near the 26-yard line. 28 to nothing. The LaVille Lancers have the lead on the Bellman Oil Company scoreboard seven seconds into this third quarter. So if you're the Cavaliers, your job right now is to not just only chew clock up, but be effective in doing so, which means try to play a clean second half. I know I've used that word clean at least three times in our broadcast tonight, but it's that simple. And the penalties have got to stop here for the Cavaliers if they're going to give themselves a shot. T formation, and it's going to be a handoff and a great run right up the middle, and then a fumble by Ortiz. He got hit, and the Lancers recover. Throwing that hit there was Aiden Doyle, I believe, and he wound up with the football. I mean, he literally took it right from Ortiz, and right off the bat, the Cavaliers' first possession is a turnover. Ortiz got walloped on that play there, Tony, and he uh, comes off the, uh, the field there with a little bit of a – Shaking his head a little bit, he, he knows he, he, he made a mistake, but boy, he took a wallop and hit there. So this happens at the 11.48 mark, and the Lancers now will be going right to left with their first possession of the second half, and they fumble, and it bounces to Plummer, and now he's going to get sacked clear back to the 40-yard line. That'll be a nine-yard loss on the play. Plummer... It just simply had the ball slip out of his hands, but it bounced right back to him about belt high. He picked it up and went to drop back the throw and got clubbed, and down he went. So that's a loss of about nine yards in this particular scenario. So now it's second and 19 for the Lancers, backed up to the Culver 40-yard line. So the Lancers will break the huddle. Owen Smith will be the receiver to the right. You got two right side halfbacks out of a single gun look. Plummer. 
Drops back, throws a deep ball. Oh. It got blocked and deflected in the air. Intercepted. Schumann, or I should say Marquise Anderson, winds up with it. And it's an interception for the Cavaliers. Plummer got hit as soon as he released. The ball went up in the air and recovered in midair by Marquise Anderson. And just like that, LaVille gives the Cavaliers the ball back. Well, Anderson's got good hands because he plays tight end on uh, offense, Tony. He was able to be uh, the Johnny on the spot there and uh, able to pick that ball off. And the Cavaliers now have the ball on uh, in their territory to uh, start this drive. So, first two possessions for both teams result in turnovers. And now it's a two-back pro set, and it's a handoff right side to Schumann. He slides by one, lowers his head to the 45-yard line of the Ville for about a four-and-a-half, maybe five-yard gain, pending the spot of the football. Boy, Schumann. I, I, folks, if you're not able to watch it on our streaming affiliates, RTC TV4 and the ihsaatv.org, and you're just not – you focus on number 40 and how hard this kid runs. Technically almost perfect. Again, a two-back split here with a right halfback, and it's going to be a handoff. Schumann again cuts it to the middle, gains about a couple yards, and drugged carry. down by a host of white jerseys shy of the 40, right near the 43-yard line. Betcher getting in on a tackle, on and tackle. Student also getting in on another defensive play for LaVille. So now you're looking at a third down and about a long three coming up. We're two minutes into this third quarter, 28 to nothing. LaVille with the lead. They're on defense. The Cavs, they'll break the huddle and line it up on the offensive side of the ball. Well, they're going to stick with that uh, pro set with an offset right. And Thomas, he's the right wing back in this particular play. That's not Thomas. That is uh, Brown, and there's the give. It's right up the middle, and the Lancers are going to snuff it out with no gain, maybe a loss of a yard on that particular carry by Blake Thompson. Tackle by number 25. So the tackle Noah will get Reichert. credit to Reichert, who came in at the inside linebacking position tonight in replacement of uh, Ross Wagner, who was ineligible to play this evening. So was uh, Garrett. So now you're looking at a fourth and two for the Cavaliers at the LaVille 41. These are the plays that the Cavaliers are going to win tonight or at least get back into this game. They've got to they've got to execute. It'll be a straight T formation this time, and it'll be a counter left side, and Schumann the carry. That's a first down as he lowered his head and gets draped down at the 39-yard line. Good run by Shane Schumann. That moves the chains for the Cavaliers as it'll be a first down coming up for Culver. Boy, Schumann keeps those legs moving. I know we talked about it in the first half, Tony, but Boy, I don't know the why ball. they're going to – look at this. They're going to – I thought – well, that should have been a little bit better spot. I would have thought so. We may not have a first down here. here. The so the chain gang the will measure. come out, and the measurement is coming. Interesting. Huh. <laughs> the chain gang got one person clapping for them. They get go. no love. Shane tried. No love. Shane tried. No love. Clock stops at the nine-minute mark here in this third quarter for a measurement, and let's see where it's going to be here. Yep, there's the first down by almost the length of the football. It sure looked like that was a first down. I thought so as well. Yeah, so – Whole new set of downs for Coach Zaner's boys. And now we got a first and 10 from the 39-yard line for the Culver Cavaliers trying to keep the drive going. And our first possession, it was a fumble recovered by LaVille. This is their second possession of the second half. In the T formation, Fisher under the center gives the handoff. And it's going to be, again, I think it's Thompson this time. He goes left side, and he gets stacked up after about a yard gain. Getting in on part of that tackle there, I believe, for the Lancers. Well, actually, it was a host of them. On Stafford getting part of that tackle. And the other one, of course, was from the secondary, free safety Hayden Wheatbrook. Fisher comes from the near sideline with eight and a half left to go in the third. It's a second and eight here for the Cavaliers on the Belmont Oil Company scoreboard. Max in a T formation with double tights. Ball in the middle of the field. It's going to be a handoff. Schumann got some hole right side, and he's dropped Schumann down to the 35. By well, the Lancers are doing their best and doing what they've been told to do, and uh, that is tackle low. And that's the only way you're going to bring down a guy like Schumann and Thompson is uh, you can't go for the waist. You've got to be at their shins and ankles if you're going to slow these guys down. 
So with that run by Schumann, it's now uh, going to be a third and seven coming up for the Cavaliers with the ball right at the 36-yard line. Still a four-man front shown here by the Lancers when the Cavaliers break the huddle and line it up offensively. So the boys break it. Now we got, a, again, a different look this time. You got, oh, no, it's a straight tee with double tights. And here we go. It'll be a handoff. Thompson runs it to the outside on the edge. Lancers swallow him up before the first down. Thompson He's going to be about two to three yards shy of the first down. And he gets dropped right near the 34-yard line, so that'll be a couple of yards on the game. But now we're looking at a fourth and a very long four coming up here for Culver. And again, when you're down 28 to nothing and you're early here in the third quarter, that's got seven minutes still left in it, you're going for it. So we'll see what the play call is coming up here for the Cavs. Now, we've seen these fourth down plays happen with the Cavaliers passing. They already got one fourth down passing play that worked for first down. Let's see if they try it again. Backs are lined up in the tee. Ball left hash mark, and Tucker throws a tight end dump, and it's going to be caught by Anderson. Good enough for a first down. So that will move the chains right across the 30 down to the 28-yard line. So the short tight end dump over the middle works for the Cavaliers. Anderson's just able to find a soft spot in the defense, yep. Tony, and get his hands up. And the quarterback did a nice job of uh, hitting him right in the hands, and first down for the Cavaliers. Just like you, how you draw it up yeah. in practice. So a whole new set of downs for the Cavaliers. Clock dwindling down to 632. Now this is the kind of Culver football that everyone's accustomed to seeing, chewing up clock, but you know you're down four touchdowns. Sooner or later, time's going to become a factor for you. It'll be a straight T look again with the double tight uh, formation. Give them Thompson looking for a lead block. Schumann and boy, oh. Laville swallowed him after about a yard gain. Is, Thompson is slow in getting up. I mean, he got railroaded by a couple of Lancer players on the tackle. Tackle by Doyle. Doyle was one of them that came in and threw the lick. But credit Thompson, he is up, but he's got to come to the sideline here and gather himself. Dropped his mouthpiece in the process, but he went and picked it up. So he's just going to have to take a play off and just gather his thoughts. If I got hit that hard, I think I'd be dropping my mouthpiece too. Oh, I'm in, I'm in the yard. <laughs> I'm in the ER, pal. That was I a couple of good licks right there. Monday. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have wanted to woke up till Monday. <laughs> right, right. So now you're in a second and ten scenario for the Cavaliers. No gain on that play. I thought Thompson at least got a yard on it, but no generous give there by the officials. So the ball at the 28-yard line. This is one of the closer times the Cavaliers have gotten near the red zone. It'll be a straight T formation again with double tights. And it's going to be a give to the full full back and through with Schumann. Gets inside the 25, still churning. And he's draped Schumann off near the left hash mark by a, a couple of Lancer defenders. And he gains about a couple of big yards there. So now you're looking at a third and five coming up for the Cavaliers in this next play. Westbrook, I think, or Weebrook, I should say, was the one that may have got the tackle on that one, the 5'10", 145-pound sophomore. On the Belmont Oil Company scoreboard, the clock continues to dwindle down. We're at 517 and counting left in the third. Third and five for the Cavaliers from the Lancer 23. They're trying to get on the board for the first time tonight, trailing 28 zip. It's a straight T formation, and it's a handoff. And, boy, getting rocked was Thomas and brought down. Betcher just came through and put the lick on. Evan, a 5'11", 190-pound senior, is having himself a night tonight on both sides of the football. That will be a loss of about maybe a yard or so. The whistle saved him. So now you're looking at a fourth and a four coming up here for the Cavaliers. You talk about field vision. Nothing is, is confusing Betcher tonight. He sees everything right in front of him, and he's blowing up a lot of these Cavalier plays. Betcher is a very, very smart football player for starters. Let's get that out of the way. <laughs> and you saw it just on that particular play right there. He read his key, and the hole was open where he knew he needed to be, and he just made the play. That was Ian Brown, I think, number 32. That was the one that was stopped on the last play. So I think I may have announced the wrong name, and I apologize for that if I did indeed do that. The older you get, the more short-term short memory you, I have. And so I'm sorry, what's your name? <laughs> Scott. I know. It's been a while. 
All right, we're under the four-minute mark here in his third, fourth and five, coming up here with the Cavaliers. And the play clock is continuing to dwindle down, and the timeout here is going to get called by the Cavaliers. This is a big fourth and five from the 23. This is one of those kind of possessions here, Scott, that, you know, if you're looking to get back into the game, you got to execute this fourth and five at LaVille's 23. Yeah, you want to you want to definitely execute this. And this is also uh, things that, you know, you want positive things to come from your game. And if you pick this first down up, this is one of the things that you can show your, your team if you're Coach Zayner. You show them, hey, look, you know, this was a positive thing here we did. And you, you build on those positive things rather than uh, you, you build on positive, you, you stay away from negative. Well, tonight's game brought to you in part by our good friends at Plymouth D.C. Garage Door and Entry. Since 1988, Plymouth D.C. Garage Door and Entry has become the largest overhead door company in northern Indiana. Owner Jim Brown invites you to stop in at the Airport Road location in Plymouth or call 936-7902 for any type of garage door service you need. That's the Plymouth D.C. Garage Doors and Entry. Also by Miller's Assisted Living in Plymouth. Since 1969, Miller's Senior Assisted Living has proudly been committed to caring for those in the time of need in this community. Whatever you decide, we're here to help. Check us out at 625 Oak Hill Avenue in Plymouth. And by Michiana Contracting, the most comprehensive and trusted contractors in the state of Indiana. And by YSC Gear in downtown Plymouth, your local hometown sports store. Now located at 214 North Michigan Street in beautiful downtown Plymouth. Stop by and get cash on the spot for your gently used sporting goods like baseball gloves, bats, cleats, helmets, and athletic wear and shoes. YSC Gear, a small local sports store with a big store inventory. All right, both teams line it up here for this very important fourth and five for the Cavaliers from the 23. Tight end dump over the middle. That should be good for a first down. This time, A.J. Cooper, the recipient. We'll see where they this spot the football. That is across the first Cooper. down marker, and it'll move the chains for the Except Cavaliers. The Cavalier, so a good call down. and another tight, up, tight end dump over the middle. Well, that, it, that's been there a couple times now yeah. with a couple different receivers, Tony. So maybe, uh, you know, the Cavaliers might want to start playing that uh, play just a little bit more. Well, it's improving Tucker Fish's passing efficiency. He came into the night again, right around, uh, again, that 66.1 uh, quarterback rating, a 44% passer. First and 10, Cavaliers now down to the LaVille 18-yard line of the Belmont Oil Company scoreboard, and it's going to be a handoff left side, and Ortiz gets the call, and he gets rocked after about a two-yard edge gain. He tried to run to the left side on the edge, and Lanchers were able to snuff it out, but two yards gained by Emiliano, and so the six foot 170 pounder will, Thomas, sophomore will go back to the huddle and hope he gets the next play call. Second and eight from the LaVille 16. Tucker Fisher will scamper his way over to the left hash mark where the football is placed, and in the huddle, he'll call the play, and the boys will break. Again, it'll be a T formation. Ortiz is on the left, Schumann in the middle, and you got uh, the re another back on the right-hand side, and it's going to be a give to the middle, Schumann, and he gets wrapped up after about a yard gain. Boy, Schumann's Schumann still digging. Carry. He may have just got himself an extra yard on that hard run. Boy, I'll tell you, that kid is fun to watch. That was Ethan Thomas getting the call on that one. My apologies. And Ian Brown is number 32. I keep getting those mixed up. <laughs> so... I can do to help. I, you know, Shane, if it wasn't for you, I'd, I'd, I'd be just absolutely hopeless. I would be out in the parking lot indeed. T formation in his third and seven. And we got a f flag on the play, flag Tony. The play? I think maybe LaVille might have jumped here. We'll see. That looks to be the case because this penalty it goes against the Lancers. So that gets the Cavaliers a little closer. They're now third and about two, and the ball placed at the 10-yard line. We're at the 11 is where they'll third officially place it. Two. We're under two minutes remaining here in his third quarter. Third and two. 28 nothing. Lancers have the lead in the Belmont Oil Company scoreboard. Fisher comes to the huddle, talks to the boys again, and now they break. It'll be a T formation once again. And here's the snap and the give. Actually, it's going to be Schumann getting the call. Tries to get it up the middle. Can he cross the 10? It'll be close. We'll see where they spot the football. Boy, it looks like it's right on that uh, first down marker. They're looking, but they're going to fall short. They're short a yard. 
So now it's fourth and one from the 10 yard line. Up a fourth down play, fourth and one. Here is a big, the biggest play of the night for the, the Cavaliers. For the Cavaliers. Fourth and one from the LaVille 10-yard line. A T formation to give Schumann. Pushes forward and gets the first down. Schumann on the carry. He'll get to the eight, and it's going to be a first and goal for the Cavaliers now. No, nothing fancy about that one. Nope. Tony just shot straight out of the well, cannon. Well, you see Tucker, the quarterback, push him? <laughs> yeah. He pushed Schumann right through the pile. <laughs> as if you need, as if need help. <laughs> So uh, that'll move the chains, <laughs> and they'll spot the football officially at the seven-yard line. But now we're at 50 seconds remaining here in this third quarter. Fisher will come from the near sideline. Cavaliers trying to get off the goose egg. This season, the Cavaliers have not been shut out. It'll be a T formation, first and goal. And it's a give to Schumann up the middle again. And he's going to get near the five, stop shy of it. And a late flag is thrown. Flag on the play. And the official threw it right, right at it, right the, one of the players. <laughs> so we'll see what this penalty is going to be here. Face mask against LaVille. And now that will cut the distance in half here to the goal line. So it'll be first and goal with the ball resting inside the five right at the three-yard line for the Cavaliers. Looking to punch it in for a first time tonight. Down to 23 line. seconds, and now the count. The clock will continue to roll thanks to the official whistle. And it looks like the Cavaliers are just going to let the clock one down. And that's exactly what they will do. So they will be first and goal from the LaVille three-yard line. They're trailing 28 to nothing. Don't go away. Our AM Home Services game of the week between the Lancers and the Cavaliers continues after this 30 second timeout. Third quarter, it's LaVille 28, your Cavaliers 0. Call Gutter Guys. We make it seamless. We offer clean and something repair, to drink. leaf guards, <laughs> and we have over 30 <laughs> colors of fridge. aluminum for you to choose from. We provide free estimates, and 100% satisfaction is guaranteed. For more information, please call Gutter Guys today and see what we can do for you. Call the Gutter Guys at 780-2311. That's 780-2311. <laughs> Welcome back here to the friendly confines of Culver High School on a chilly Friday night. We've seen some little bit of rain pass through, but we're clear now, and the Lancers are 12 minutes away from winning their fifth game of the season. But they're looking to pitch a shutout, but they're going to have to try to do this in a first and goal from the three-yard line as the Cavaliers in their best scoring position of the night. Yeah, Tony did a nice job of uh, – coming down in, 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 in this drive, and they have just kept going and kept going and not stopped and uh, and take advantage of a, a LaVille penalty here to get them on the, knocking on the door to the end zone. Tonight's game also brought to you by Culver Portside Marina, Northern Indiana's premier full-service marina. Visit culverportsidemarina.com. All right. So we begin the fourth quarter in a first and goal Never from the three-yard line. Down. It'll be... A T formation again. Schumann's in the middle, and there's the give to him. He lunges toward the end zone, stopped right at the goal line. So the Lancers are able to prevent Schumann from lunging into the end zone. And now it is going to be second and goal from the one-yard line. Again, a T formation. Schumann's in the middle. Fisher is going to try to sneak it in on a quarterback. A sneak. Does he lunge in enough? Finally, the whistle sounds. The pile, though, just stalemated. But did Fush Fisher get across the line? That's the question. The answer is no. Again, the Lancer defense just not budging on their goal line stance defensively. So now it's a third and goal from the one-yard line. Maybe they try that tight end dump again. It's a, it's a short play, but it's it's right there. Well, you wonder what they're going to do here. Yeah. 
All right, Brown is the left half back. Schum in the middle. There's the push toward the middle. Did it Fisher keep it? Again, they try to get and break the LaVille middle. Did they get in? The answer is yes. The Cavaliers get on the board. Tucker Fisher on the quarterback sneak. Gets the Cavaliers on the board for the first time tonight with 10.42 left here in the fourth. It's 28 to 6. Well, I'll tell you, that one, the Cavaliers had to earn. Yeah, I did a nice job, though, of that drive, Tony, to get some points on the board. And as we said, sometimes you, you take these uh, learning experiences that are our football games, and uh, you, you are able to, to look at this drive and point out some really, really positive things for the Cavaliers. Two-point conversion coming up here for the Cavaliers. Schumann's going to be the lone back. Fisher under the center, and it's going to be a pass toward the middle, and the pass is going to be incomplete. And the inability to finish on the two-point conversion will keep the score 28 to 6. 10.42 left to go in the game. It's our AM Home Services game of the week, and it continues after this 30-second timeout. Arena handles all water recreational needs. When it comes to pontoons, Godfrey leads the industry in performance and quality, and Portside Marina has it in stock. From sand pan, aqua patio, and sweet water pontoons, if you're looking for a family boat, Culver Portside Marina can help. Located at 514 West Mill Street in Culver. Stop in or call them at 842-5000. Culver Portside Marina. Well, welcome back here to Culver. As the score now, 28 to six, the Cavaliers finally get the monkey off the back and get on get in the end zone, Scott. Yeah, they've had uh, some good drives tonight, Tony, that just hadn't worked out for them. Uh, some untimely turnovers, but uh, they were able to make that drive last and get into the end zone and, and get themselves feeling a little bit better about the, uh, the, the way this game's going. All right. We'll begin here with the Cavaliers kicking off to the Lancers. Tonight's game also brought to you in part by the Pilot News, Marshall County's news source since 1851, and by Bowen Printing, where service smiles, custom creations are what we specialize in since 1943. That's Bowen Printing, called Dawn today, printing for all of your promotional needs. And by Culligan Soft Water, celebrating 81 years of serving Marshall County. Scott Masters, Tony Ross, A.J. Bodine, at our Max 98.3 studios. All right, the Cavaliers will be kicking right to left on your radio dial. Back to receive. Uh, well, there's nobody back to receive here for the Lancers. Andrew Dill might because he's anticipating a short pooch kick. There it is. And Dill's going to catch it inside the 35. Races to the line. Now he's going to go to the outside 40, 45, 50. Look out like a deer. He's off. 40, Colbert 30. It's going to be a kick return and a Lancer touchdown. Andrew Dill on the kickoff. Boy, a 30, turn. well, make that what, 10, uh, 20, Boy, a 60, 70 down. yard return. Boy, Dill has got some speed, Tony, and once he, once he gets downhill, man, he is tough to, to catch, and he just caught one good block there and was able just to take it all the way to the house and, and get uh, Laville back on the board. But, whew, man, that kid is fast. So an extra point coming up here for the Lancers. And boy, that's a big answer by them on special teams. We said tonight, special teams, you, you got to pay attention to that with LaVille just because of that guy right there that we just saw do a 70-yard return. Well, in, in you know, last week's uh, loss for LaVille, special teams is, is, is what got him. Yeah. And so I, you know that was a focus in practice this week. It, it really was. That's a good, good point on your part. They really – spend a little more extra time than what they normally do right. and with their special teams. The officials are talking right at the 15-yard line, at least two of them, one of them being the head judge here, and don't know what that conversation could be about. So while they're sitting here talking about where they're going to go after dinner, <laughs> which I recommend two places, either the Lake House Grill or Papa's, <laughs> we'll see where they will go. We're at? Fritas, oh, Fritas, yeah, one. doing a little Mexican action. All right. Fritas is a good place to go to. We want them to advertise, so 
you know. Here's Zarnecki with, <laughs> with the extra point here. Here's the snap, the place, the boot. It's up, and it is good again. He's only missed one this season, and he's got one, two, three, four, five tonight. So he continues to be on a roll in the PAT department. The Lancers now have a 35-6 to six lead. Yep, and it's the small things, the little things that we talked about, and mm -hmm. that was some of the some of the concerns from uh, last week's ball game uh, for Laville. And boy, they've come out, and I think they've done a pretty good job at the little things. I think Coach Hostrauser probably is uh, fairly pleased over there on the uh, sidelines. Tonight's game brought to you in part by Burt's Body Shop. You bend them, we mend them at Burt's Body Shop in Plymouth. Also by the Complete Printer, TCP, the official printing company of Max 98.3. I want to say a special thank you also to Plymouth DC Garage Door and Entry. Since 1988, Plymouth DC Garage Door and Entry has become the largest overhead door company in northern Indiana. Owner Jimmy Brown, he invites you to stop in at their airport location, airport road location in Plymouth. Just call 936-7902 for any type of garage door service need you have. Well, Jimmy runs in the family. Michael Brown, he's turned into a good chef himself. Oh, yeah. I mean, you talk some of that pork, oh. that pork shoulder that oh, Lord makes. Oh, have mercy. Goodness sakes. Lord have mercy. Yeah, Jim knows about garage doors. He also knows a little thing about cooking. A little thing about cooking, yeah. He Michael's does, uh, following, him. Michael's following him right in his footsteps. Oh, of course, Michael, he's the uh, general manager of uh, Plymouth Applebee's, another yes. sponsor for us. Yep. All right. Saw them all decked out in their pink for the, yes, for the, uh, for the Breast Cancer Month. All right, Leighton Zarnecki is going to kick it off here to the Cavaliers going left to right on your radio dial. And he'll boot it from his 40-yard line. Blake Thompson, one of them back to receive. And I think the other is Ethan Thomas. And, oh, and it's going to be caught. It gets from the 15-20, and they had dropped by A.J. He is caught and then Cooper dropped at the 25-yard line. Cooper on the return there. A.J., tough kid. Tougher than his old man, as a matter of fact. But, you know, that's uh, – <laughs> I'm just kidding. His dad's up here at the press box, so you knew, I had to, you knew I had to go there. I had to move out of the way. I'm right, <laughs> I'm right in between you two. Well, Coop is, Coop is part of the Plymouth Park Department and has been, and, and this guy is an amazing guy, well-known here in the Culver community, and I, lo I love him to death. He's a wonderful gentleman. He's got a good kid, too, and this the is family's we, one of them. This is what we call the back pedal. <laughs> that <pedal>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 35 to 6. That's the score. Cavaliers on the offense. They go into T formation, and uh, again, it's a handoff right up the middle. And I believe that Schumann's going to get the call on that particular play. May gain a half yard. Schumann on the carry. Or nothing. And then they're going to say nothing. No so second and 10 second coming up. And 10. Just about 10 minutes left in this one. 35-6, LaVille with the lead on the Belmont Oil Company scoreboard. Over on the LaVille side, the Lancer football players making some noise to help their defense out a little bit. Boy, Jeff Kaiser, who is the defensive coordinator for LaVille, that, that guy is pretty smart. Here's a give and a handoff run to the near side up to the 25, but really no place to go Thomas for Thomas or – that's about the best Thomas could do on that particular on play. Andrew Dill came up from the secondary to make the tackle. It's now third and 10 for the Cavaliers. Gain of one on that last run. Tucker will come to the huddle. And the Cavaliers break. It'll be a T formation. Schumann's in the middle. And that Brown on one end, Thomas on the other. Lancers end up jumping. Aiden Doyle got a little too excited, and he stuck his nose across the line. On the play. And that'll be five yards back for the Lancers on that offside. Go against the Lancers. I think that was a good cadence uh, by the, the uh, Cavalier quarterback the there that pulled him offsides because yard line. he thought he was for sure they were going. <laughs> he was going across. Well, you know, Aiden, he's just loving the fact that he's able to get to play football again. Yeah. And it's fun to see a success story like Aiden Doyle, who, again, he was he was clouded as being done for the rest of the season with that injury he had in the first week of practice. 
T formation, handoff, Schumann off the right guard, stood up but still turns for a couple of yards, getting closer to the first down marker right at the 35-yard line. And, man, I could watch that kid run all night. He is fun to watch. There is just no, no quitting that kid, even after he's hit. No, he doesn't stop. He keeps going and going. And see, it takes multiple hits to bring him down. So it's a fourth and two from their 34. Fisher looking over at the line of defense. We might be trying a little cadence call here. Looks at his wrist for the next play call. T formation. Again, he tries to bark out a little louder to get the Lancers to jump, not happening, and the play clock down the one, and that forces the Cavaliers to call a timeout. Stops the big clock at 7.58 on the Bellman Company, Oil Company scoreboard, 35-6 to in favor of the LaVille Lancers. Scott Masters, Tony Ross, A.J. Bodine back at our studios. Well, we mentioned a little bit about the uh, – the volleyball sectionals tomorrow that are going to be in play. Soccer sectionals, or actually regionals, are going to be tomorrow. And uh, Argus, the number one team uh, in 1A, is going to take on uh, Morgan Township at noon at Eugene Snyder Field. The 10 a.m. game will feature Couts against Westview. Then up at 3A at Goshen, the uh, undefeated Plymouth Rockies, who are in the top three in the state, will take on Chesterton at 10 a.m., and if they win, They'll be in the championship game against the winner against Elkhart and Munster. Elkhart, the favorite in that particular one. They, too, have only one loss under their belt, and that was to Penn when they lost one to nothing in midseason. Elkhart, a very good team, but, boy, I tell you, it's hard to not like this Plymouth Rocky soccer team on the boys' side as they are just they're just something special to watch. It's like they have that ball. It looks like a yo-yo on their foot. They can do whatever they want with it. And I, I heard some of your, your broadcast uh, of the championship game, and uh, it, it sounded like it, they were just having a ball, oh, too. Oh, man. I mean, just, just, I mean, absolutely they having just, a great time. Scotty, they just make it look so effortless. All right, fourth and two. Big play here for the Cavaliers, and the handoff to Schumann goes off the right guard, lunges forward. Did he get the first down? The Lancers Schumann are saying they stopped him. The Cavaliers are saying, well, at least give us a look. But guess what? It's not going to happen. The Lancers make the stop, stop and short. they take over on possession with 7.51 left to go in the game. From the Cavalier, so from the Cavs 35, it'll be first and 10 for the Lancers. And again, that defense is, you know, they've showed signs of bending, but they haven't broke. And there's been plenty of opportunities for that to happen. So now first and 10, LaVille. Up 35-6 to six on the Bellman Oil Company scoreboard. Single back shotgun. Plumber hands off right side. This is DeWitt getting the call. Gets inside to 30 and railroaded down at the 25. DeWitt That's close to a carry. first down run. As a matter of fact, that should move the chains. We'll see where they spot Fisher it. On the tackle. Yeah, DeWitt hit that hole pretty hard. Uh, opened up by the, the Lancer offensive line. They were able to gain about eight, maybe nine yards on a first down, first down play. Second and short coming up for the Lancers. DeWitt, he's a very good running back. And, you know, he's in that running back rotation. He came in with 28 carries and a touchdown this year. Out of the gun, Plummer. He's going to fake the handoff, dump it off left side, and Dill follow or just dropped the pass. It was a short little out pass to the left side, and he couldn't handle it because Plummer didn't put it on the mark. So the incompletion will now make it a second down and a third down and one coming up here for LaVille. Bring up a third down play, third and I'll one. I'll see if... Those are still some of the little things that we're talking about. Oh, yeah. That's a freshman mistake right there. You know, but he'll get better at it. Aiden Doyle is going to be one of the halfbacks. He's going to line up uh, right in between the tackle and guard here. And DeWitt is going to be the tailback. Plummer is going to try to sneak in a first down and lunges forward to get it. He needed to get across the 25. And the slender young quarterback ends up getting the first down run. Just put his head down, Tony, and got behind his offensive line and was able to get the needed yards for that first down. Nice job by that freshman. Looking confident on every step he took. Oh, yeah. So from the Culver 24, the Lancers will have a first and 10, up 35 to 6. LaVille is on an eight-game winning streak between these two clubs. Last Culver win was back in 2013 when they put 43 up on the board. LaVille answered with 36 in that game. 
Clover had a four-game winning streak from 2009 to 2013. Here's the snap to give to DeWitt. Sheds a block, takes it off the left side. He's going to get across the 20. He's going to go even further down the left sideline to the 10, inside the 10, the near the five-yard line. So He's DeWitt with another nice carry for the Lancers. Will now get him in a first and goal. They do. He did a nice job of getting behind his offensive line there, Tony, and he didn't try to push the play too far. He waited and let his offensive lineman engage on the defensive lineman. Therefore, he was able to hit that hole. And that uh, lineman you're talking about is the left tackle, Colin Allen. Yes. And Allen is a 6'3", 230-pound sophomore. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> That's big. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. So it'll be a single back look here. Twins to the right and Smith and Dill. Plummer is going to hand it off to Witt off left side. Can he sneak in, do, taking the outside, dives into the end zone and scores. DeWitt with a touchdown and the Lancers tack on another one, leading 41 to six now. It's again, just kind of like I was talking about, DeWitt lets his offensive line get out and get in front of him, engage in those blocks with those defensive linemen, and he was able to get himself into the end zone for a Lancer touchdown. Paul DeWitt, the 5'9", 185-pound sophomore, sneaks it in, running the edge. And an extra point coming up here for Zarnecki. That's a three-yard scamper for DeWitt. Here is the snap. The place, the boot. It's up, and Zarnecki so remains it's perfect good. on the night. So, with 6.08 remaining in this contest, LaVille has opened it up. It's now 42-6. to We're back after this 30-second timeout. For all your flooring needs, come to the store that gives you more. The floor store and more. We have the area's largest selection of floor covering. We carry a wide variety of carpet, ceramic tile, hardwood flooring, vinyl, area rugs, and laminate. We even offer styles in wood, ceramic, hand scraped, exotic, stone, and tile. Why wouldn't you come to us? The floor store and more, conveniently located in Plymouth. Well, Paul DeWitt getting into the end zone for the Lancers. That is uh, DeWitt's second touchdown of the season. And now LaVille has a 42-6 lead with six minutes left to go in this game. You talked about some of the action tomorrow, Tony, and uh, my daughter and the Argus Dragons will be in the regionals tomorrow. I was going to get to that, just ran out of time to play. But, yeah, the girls, they're ranked, what, 15th, 14th, or 15th in the, in the state? Uh, yeah, I believe it's it's 15th. And, uh, and they're playing at LaVille. Yes, they get to play at the Newton Park, which is so awesome. Beautiful place. Here's the boot. Cooper grabs it, gets up to the 20, 25, and stopped Cooper, near the 27-yard line. So, A.J. Cooper, the 5'10", 180-pound senior. It's a good thing he gets all his athletic ability from his mom. You can tell in that kickoff return right there. So it's 42 to 6. Down to 545 <laughs> remaining. <laughs> Duck and cover over here, I swear. <laughs> well, as long as Coop is in his press box, he knows I'm gonna I'm gonna rip him. <laughs> now he's throwing stuff at me. Good. All right, so here we me. go. First to 10. It's a handoff to Schumann. He's going to take it off the left guard. Look at him churn. Schumann Gets up carry. across the 30 and brought down to the 33. That'll be about a three-yard gain for that big fella. Make that four. Yeah, keep moving. Four-and-a-half-yard run. Any, meeny, miny, mo on the Lancer tackle there as we're down to five minutes remaining here in the game. Second down play coming up. Second and five from the 33. So here we go in a second down and five. It'll be a T formation with Schumann in the middle. Here's the give. Oh, and a fumble by the Cavalier, Ian Brown, the 5'6", 145-pounder. So Brown recovered it, kept possession for the Cavaliers, but they dropped back a couple yards, so now it's a third and eight. Down to four and a half left to go. Well, now it's just turned into a nice, cool night. The flag is not blowing at all, and as we wind down our Friday evening, 
Tucker Fisher will come from the near sideline for the next play call for the Cavaliers. It'll be a third and eight. Ball resting at the 30-yard line. Schumann this time will be the left half back on the tee, and it's going to be a give to him off the right side. Then he cuts it to the middle, trying to climb his way to the 35, and he got there. So a good run by Schumann. Gets the Cavs to the 35-yard line. Now you're looking at a fourth down and a late flag is thrown. And an unsportsmanlike on the Lancers this time. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the Lancers. So this one is going to go, I believe, against Lancer Mason Pink. Because he's the one who's got his arms spread out saying, what, what's that call for? Well, that's not going to make Will you know, Holstrauser I'm glad you brought that up. All. Yeah, that, that will not. You know, it's 42-6. to six, Right. And that's just, you know. You, that's unnecessary. No matter what he did. If he talked, he needs the needs the hush. Right. And he's going over the coaching staff right now to explain himself. And Jeff Kaiser's the one he's got to answer to right now as Will goes over and talks to him <laughs> and has a little talking to. Well, There's a learning lesson spot. right there. Yeah. First and ten, Cavaliers because of that penalty. And Schumann lowers his head, and he buries himself into a couple of more yards, Schumann moving forward down to the 45-yard line of the bill. I think – He's, he's what I call load back, Tony. I mean, oh, they just good. give him the ball, and he is a load and just keeps going and going and going. But you know with, with, with Schumann that makes him even more impressive is that he's such a big fella. It looks like he's lowering his head, but he's actually seeing play develop. Yeah. You know, and, you know, a lot of people don't recognize that. Backs in the T again, second and five. There's the give this time. Met up is Ethan Thomas right Ethan at the 45. So no gain on that play. That stick is probably going to go to LaVille's Michael, Michael Good Andrew and Andrew Dill. Well, Andrew Dill, you know, you look at him. Is at and he's LaVille, about 5'10", 6 foot, and all 150 pounds soaking wet. I was going to say that's generous. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. Generous. It, it is. But, man, can he hit. Third and five. T formation for the Cavs. Ball left hash mark. At the LaVille 45. Tucker's going to look at his wrist again for a new play call. Here it comes, and he sticks it right into the midsection of his running back, Ian Brown. Ian okay. Brown, and he'll gain close to a first down run, but the Lanchers may have stopped it by, by a yard, so now it's going to be a fourth Michael and one. And, Jonah Skiles. and at this point, Tony, you're, get, you're just going to go for it if you're the Cavaliers. You're not. Well, the Lancers are bringing out some twosies out there on defensive on the defensive side of things. Is this is pretty good decision there by Coach Hostjazer up 42 to six, and you don't want any of your key players injured heading into the sectionals, which are starting next week. There's the handoff up the gut. Schumann gets the call, buries himself inside the 40 to the 38 yard line. On the That'll move the chains on the it's Culver first down. first down. Hey, come off the bench and get to tackle Schumann. That's fun. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> hey, I'm a I'm a what of 152 pound <laughs> sophomore soaking wet, and I need to tackle this 230 30 pound fullback. Can't right. wait. Yeah. Sign me up for that. I didn't even have my shoes tied 10 minutes ago. And I'm in the game. <laughs> I had my warm-up jacket on, Coach. What are you doing to me? <laughs> All right. So the Cavaliers break the huddle in his first and 10 from the 39-yard line. T formation here. And it's going to be a give Schumann off the right guard. He gets up and did right at the 37. Schumann on the carry. Leighton Zernecki still in the game. In on part of that tackle, it looked like, for the Lancers. As we are now under Zernicki one minute on left to go in the game. Well, the Lanchers will take a 5-1 and one mark into postseason play. Their first round matchup will be Lewis Cass on the road. The Cavaliers, they will have to make a long trek to Lake Station. The good news, it's not been a good year for those folks out in the region. And they're going to have to figure out a way to stop this running game of Culver. Down to 25 seconds left. Cavaliers are just... Working time off, and they're probably just going to let it run down in the ball game. So your final score from Culver on our A&M Home Services Game of the Week. It's the LaVille Lancers 42 and the Culver Cavaliers 6. Coming up next, it's our Bourbon Street Pizza Post Game Show. 
And we've got it coming up in just a moment right here on Max 98.3 Sports. That'll do it. Final score. LaVille 42, your Cavaliers 6. It does come with a lot of lumps and red lights. Please drive clear of those. safe. Doesn't have to be difficult. I was going to first source bank. I was going to go into some of our uh, you can see all <laughs> other games. Oh, balances and transactions my Coach place. Center's game is we did <laughs> Rochester when we were there for... <laughs> Yeah. Get the green light to a successful yeah, financial Please. future with First Source's money management tools. First Source Bank, where better is better. Member FDIC. Whether you're a local farmer or a captain of industry, an integral part of the success of your business is having quality fuels and lubes. With great products, competitive pricing, and outstanding customer service, Bellman Oil is the company you can trust. No job is too big or too small for Bellman Oil, and their staff has the experience and the training to find the perfect products for your exact needs. For Chevron, Sitco, BP, Mag One, and BP Racing Fuel delivered in clean trucks by courteous drivers, call Bellman Oil at 574-546-2342 or visit bellmanoil.com. Michiana Contracting offers complete construction services for your initial concept through giving you the keys to your completed building. Meeting deadlines and budgets require seamless coordination for all parties involved with the project. They will Dependable. Michiana Contracting.